Hello there. Today I wanted to talk about the RISE scoring model. This is a prioritization framework that is going to help you prioritize the different ideas, potential opportunities or features, products that you are planning to build for your customers. The RISE scoring model sometimes is also known as the RISE framework. And RISE stands for Rich, Impact, Confidence and Effort. So obviously what RISE is going to do is take into account these four parameters and actually calculate a score out of those that is going to give you what is known as the RISE score. And way to the end because I'm going to show you how to use a template that I have created in Notion to calculate the RISE score. And now let's go quickly through what those parameters are, what they are measuring and how you should use them. So first of all, you have the reach. The reach is going to calculate or estimate what are the number of people that are going to be affected by this feature idea that you want to implement. Typically, this is going to be measured by the number of users per a period of time, let's say month, quarter, year, maybe even. And in some other cases, it can be something like page views uh, over a period of time. Again, page views per month or per quarter. The next metric that we are going to use is the impact. In the impact, we want to make sure that we are bringing value to our customers. That's what impact means. And how to measure impact, you can do it in several ways. And it depends a lot on what type of features you have or what type of product or idea you have. In some cases, you are going to be able to do a quantitative measurement and some others are going to be more of a like a qualitative measurement. In some cases, you're going to be able to measure the number of conversions. So how many people actually have paid for this new feature or this new product? In some other cases, this is going to be not possible to do because it's a feature as a part of a bigger product that is sold as a whole unit with many different features, you don't know realistically how much that feature is actually attracting or converting customers to paying customers. In these cases, you are going to try to measure how much this new feature is going to delight or going to bring value to your customers. That's how you're going to measure impact. I didn't mention earlier that this rise framework or scoring model was proposed by Intercom, was the first one to implement it. Intercom gives the next tiers to actually measure the impact. So it actually gives you like a selection or different tool, different options to select from. So the first one being the small impact, second being medium impact, third being high impact, and fourth being massive impact. And this will have numeric values attached to them. So small impact being 0 0.5, medium impact being 1, high impact being 2, Massive impact being three. And obviously the numbers are going to be used in the calculation. The next parameter that we are going to be using is the confidence. Obviously, we don't know for sure that those estimates that we are giving are very realistic or not because, well, estimates. And we had to make sure that we are at, degree, at a degree of confidence into our calculation. That's why we have confidence. How confident are we in the calculations that we are, or the estimations that we are giving? Again, in this case, we have three tiers that we can choose from. First one being high confidence, which would be about 100%. We're pretty sure of what the decision or the estimates that we are giving. Second being medium confidence. This would be about 80% in the, when we are using in the calculation. And then there's going to be low confidence, which you say is a 50%. Some companies, some other people use Santa's uh, different tiers and maybe a fourth tier. But I think that for me, these three tiers work pretty well. I will keep with uh, using them. And obviously, finally, we also want to measure the effort. Uh, we can have very great ideas that have a lot of potential, but it might take us forever to get there. And we might have uh, good ideas that have a relatively small impact, but we might be able to get, them, get to them faster. So it depends a lot on where you are, in which situation. Sometimes you have to prioritize those long-term or big ideas. Sometimes you have to prioritize the small ones. So it depends a lot for you. You will have to analyze that on your own. But the effort is there to measure this. And typically what you're using for measuring effort is person month. So meaning a full person working in this project for a whole month. That's what you're going to measure. So you will say that, well, this project is going to take me five people working for a month. That's a five. Intercom recommends that if any takes less than a month, you just take a 0 0.5. Just to make sure, because realistically, there are very few tasks that would take you less than that couple of weeks because you had to do much work, not just about development. Sometimes you had to do marketing, you have to do documentation very easily. The whole work is going to amount to the two weeks. So now we have defined the four parameters. What do we do with them? Well, we have to calculate a score, which is the right score. And this score is calculated by multiplying the reach, the impact and the confidence and dividing them 
by the effort. And this will give you a score, the right score. Obviously, the items that had the most value are going to be the items that had the highest score. So some conclusions and some things to take into account when you are using the RISE framework. So first of all, uh, it is all based in estimation. So as always, there is no perfect formula. There's no perfect or no scientific method to prioritize your work. There is no a correct answer ever. And you potentially can make uh, mistakes. But the good thing with doing or using a framework like this is that you're going to pay attention to, okay, how many people could take advantage of this? Which one of my user personas are going to use this product or this feature compared to the rest? Uh, how much impact this has? How much value this is going to create for those customers? How much confident I am I in these estimations? How much effort is going to take me to build this new feature? Being able to do this work is already helping you to make better decisions. So it's always good that then you review the results. And sometimes, as I said earlier, some things might get a higher score just because they are lower effort. That doesn't mean that necessarily it's always the best to take the lowest effort. And sometimes you have to balance a little bit on where you are. Sometimes your, your product might need a big shakeup and then you had to do a big restructure and be refocused of what your product is. And maybe you had to go for those uh, high value tickets or more effort features that you could build because those are going to be the ones that take you to a new place. While the smaller tickets, might not take you that far and move your product into new positions. Second one, obviously you have to be consistent. So if you are using person month for measuring the effort, if you are using people sales or conversions, you have to be all the time using the same type of units. If you're not using the same type of units, uh, obviously the score is not gonna work. So you have to be consistent and you have to define probably the best is that you documented how you are measuring uh, these different parameters. So every time that you go and calculate the score, you make sure that you're consistent. Obviously, what you had to do in the very beginning is that you had to document all of your ideas, all of your potential features that you could be creating, put them in the table and make sure that you are then estimating them and then calculate that score. And again, once you are ready and with your scores calculated, then you are able to prioritize based on the highest score. Again, Take it with a pinch of salt. Sometimes you might have to be prioritizing things that have a little bit lower score because you want to go for that bigger impact, even if the effort is maybe higher. So before I move on, I start going and showing the, the template. Do you use RISE? Do you use the RISE scoring framework? What do you think about it? What are the other frameworks maybe that you are using that is not RISE? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a like. So now let's go through the template that I have created in Notion. I will link in the pinned comment and description where you can find the template. So the first thing that I have in the template is that I have a little bit of an explanation similar to what I just have gone through in this video, explaining what uh, RISE is and how to calculate it and what the different parameters are. So if I just skip through that, because we just talked about it, I, let's go through the actual table and what you can do. So here I have an, a different ideas that I could have for a, an app to help people exercise more. You probably have heard me several times talking about apps for exercise, not that I'm going to ever do it, but it's kind of an easy example to take forward. And I have already here calculated some, a, estimated some of them and added even calculated the actual score. So here you can see that, hey, I have several ideas. So one of the ideas for a, for an app, for a mobile app for exercises is that, hey, help me find a gym. Where can I go? So what would be the potential reach? I estimate that that would be maybe 1,000 people. Uh, what would be the impact? Well, it would be a high uh, impact one. And then what would be the confidence that I have in this one? Well, for me, I think that maybe it's not completely sure that I'm that is the correct one. I will say that it's a medium. And then finally, I estimated that this is going to take five person month effort. So if I go now ahead and add a new idea to my board, let's say that I'm going to add a new idea and this is the, I don't know, exercise programming. To make sure that people have exercises there, Grammarly is kind of in the middle, but hey, let's ignore it because we actually love Grammarly. Um, what would be the reach? Obviously, if I want to help people to do exercise, probably having exercise programming and workouts that people can do 
it is definitely one of the most important things. And probably that's going to be one of the, the features that had the highest reach. Let's say that we're estimating that this is going to reach about 1,500 people. That could be my potential whole uh, audience for, for this app. The impact, we see, I think that this is going to be something that brings very high value to the people. Then let's calculate the confidence. The confidence, uh, we are going to think that, hey, uh, I think that this is something that we can be uh, highly confident, or let's say medium, because we never know uh, the the actual reach. That's going to be difficult to estimate, in my opinion, very <laughs> most of the cases, unless you have an existing product that you really know that this feature is going to affect this type of personas. So I know relatively well that this is going to be the people affected. If I'm creating a new app, very difficult to estimate. So I will just leave it as, as a medium. And then the effort, this is going to take me quite a bit of time because it's not going to be development time, but it's going to take a lot of time to actually get somebody to, to, to develop this one, some expert, some coach that can help me do development, the, developing the different exercises uh, uh, and programs. So I'm going to say that this is going to be maybe about two months for one person. So let's say 10. And then when I click, okay, just notice that already the table was doing something funky because it was already updating and it was already moving and calculating the score. This table is already sorted by the score uh, column, which is pre-calculated. So you don't have to input anything there. So in the moment that I, I input the four parameters is already calculating and sorting out the table. And here it shows me already that, hey, this is going to be value this much. And this is something that I was saying earlier. Sometimes you don't know how well or how to actually uh, choose Santa's between something that it's relatively similar, but with less effort, but this is kind of with more reach, but more effort. Which one would be more important? I think that that depends a lot on which situation you are. If you are having problems and need for money relatively soon, then you probably want to do something like the first one. But if you have already cash coming and you want to expand and you want to make sure that you're reaching to more people, you might want to do the exercise programming. This is an example of what you can do with the Notion template and how it will work in calculating and helping you prioritize your ideas, your products, your features for your customers and calculating the score and making sure that you can make a better decision or more educated decision when you're going to plan. Again, it's going to be always something that you had to put a little bit thought, of course, on your side, first for the estimation, but then for the review. I wouldn't take blindly what is recommended here, but it gives you a good idea of already of, okay, potentially I should start focusing on maybe diving a little bit deeper. If it's uh, the gene locator, the dashboard, or the exercise programming, which one of those three features that seem to be in the like the most value and the highest scored ones, which one is the one that fits the best right now? Um, and sometimes they just, just don't make that decision yourself. Talk with your customers. Always going to help you. Always going to be something that is safe and you are going to validate the problem, validate the solution together with the customers, which is extremely important to do. But this is going to give you a very good uh, area for you to research and help you do the, the research in your site, a little bit doing the market research and understanding the potential for these different features. Again, you can find the template in the link in the description and in the pinned comment, go check it out. If you have ideas for any other templates that I could be building in the future in Notion, maybe other tools like, for example, Miro, just let me know in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.